Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Andrew Brady. And it's a, a rare sunny Glasgow day, so we're outdoors today enjoying the good weather. Uh, we've got a number of labour news stories for you. And uh, the first one I wanted to bring to your attention is the, the reinstate the 305 case. Now, the situation is that the Turkish government is trying to restrict the right to strike among aviation workers as well as workers in some other sectors, uh, we believe due to pressure from Turkish airlines. And uh, recently 305 Turkish airlines workers took a sick day together as a form of industrial action because it was the only legal form of industrial action they could take. And they were fired by text message and email. And so there's a big international campaign to put pressure on, on Turkish airlines to reinstate these 305 airline workers and also to put pressure on the Turkish government to halt their attacks on trade union organizing. Um, it's worth pointing out that Turkish Airlines sponsors Manchester United Football Club as well as Barcelona and is a, a member of the, the airline group Star Alliance. So they have a number of big international partners who ideally should also be, be pressurized. Um, so we're calling for support for that campaign and for the airline workers union Hover S. Um, Andrew, I understand there's been some unrest in the, the auto industry as well. Is that right? Yes, it is. And this is going to be a growing feature uh, as very high profile companies start to make excuses for scaling back their operations and of course that means firing workers and reducing their terms and conditions and the latest example of that is in South Korea where over 45,000 workers were on a two day stoppage uh, in relation to Hyundai and mm -hmm. uh, some of the other car manufacturers in that country including uh, General Motors and and also Kai have come out, the workers there have come out in solidarity action because the car manufacturers in, in those countries are actually making pretty healthy profits but are trying to suppress the, the, wage de the legitimate wage demands of the workers and the, the workers are taking action quite rightly so just to bring that to, their, to people's attentions and, and let's keep our eye on the car manufacturing industry across the world, we've seen GM making statements in relation to Brazil, their European operations and you know USI wants to give a real focus of attention to what's going on in that sector I and mean, we look forward to having some sectoral web conferences to mm -hmm. explore the issues further that are going on in that sector so please keep your eye on what's going on in that sector. While much of the Western world is suffering from the worst recession in 50 years, Africa is booming and it's largely due to Chinese investment as a China takes raw, raw materials from Africa and also uses its surplus capital to generate future markets for itself. However, sometimes this investment comes at a cost and labor relations between Chinese companies and African workers are often quite bad. This situation was highlighted by the Industrial Global Union this week when they raised the case of a, a Chinese supervisor who was killed by mine workers on the Colum coal mine in Zambia. These mine workers were angry about the fact that uh, a new national minimum wage had not been implemented. There have been numerous cases in the past of uh, exactly the opposite situation where uh, managers at factories have shot workers, killed them um, mm -hmm. for, for protesting. And uh, it seems that one of the biggest problems is that a lot of African countries are not enforcing their own mm -hmm. labor laws when it comes to, to Chinese companies because of the importance of Chinese investment and not wanting to alienate uh, these investors. Um, so. It is also worth pointing out, however, that this isn't a universal experience, and certainly in South Africa, some of the powerful unions there have been able to change the behavior of Chinese companies. There's a case of uh, Saktwi, the textile workers' union, being able to heavily influence some of the Chinese factories there. And I think for us it demonstrates mm -hmm. that, um, as always, trade union organizing is what makes the difference to end exploitation, and uh, we will do what we can to continue to highlight this mm -hmm. issue. I understand there's quite a lot happening in the US at the moment. Do you want to give us an overview of some of those stories? Yeah, I'd be delighted to. And USI is giving a great degree of prominence to some of the issues that are going on in different continents around the world, as Walton's explained, in Africa, uh, but also in, in North America. And of course, we have the, the Hyatt's Hurts campaign, which is a fantastic campaign, a real example of how to use social media, fantastic website. and utilising and harnessing the power of social media in order to get the workers' message out there about how Hyatt is actually 
uh, treating its workforce and of, co of course that hotel chain has operations all over the world including the UK and I know trade unions within the, the UK have also been protesting about the treatment of uh, American workers and the High at Hearts campaign so that's on our homepage with links to the, the campaign so check that out and also a campaign that VSI has been keeping a close eye on for a, a lots of different reasons is the Palermo's pizza strike. Mm -hmm. This dispute has been rumbling along for several months now, has included the, the company firing workers, including migrant labour, uh, while uh, there was ongoing investigations uh, by immigration officials, something that shouldn't be interfering with a collective bargaining pro uh, a collective bargaining campaign and of course the courts have been dragged into this uh, dispute now regarding how Palermo's has fired Latino workers in particular. Also coming out of the US I saw something interesting recently uh, Pandora which is a music streaming service like, like Spotify uh, has been contacting people and asking if they can share their email addresses with the campaign to elect Mitt Romney. Uh, we're not sure quite why certain people were targeted it might be because of their music choice uh, but it sounds like... Uh, interesting to see what their music choice is. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a someone developed a profile of certain kinds of users and they were targeted with pop-ups on their iPhone saying would you like to support Mitt Romney which uh, I think is a pretty disastrous invasion of uh, someone's personal listening time and I thought uh, just the kind of unfortunate thing which advertising is beginning to stoop to at the moment. Yeah and just to pick up what's interesting about it of course is the, the very sophisticated use of uh, social media in terms of capturing data for mm -hmm. political purposes and you know there is something to be learned in that I mean it's a, a, a gross invasion of people's well, maybe, uh, privacy in their maybe we'll do the same and when people listen to Billy Bragg we'll ask him to affiliate to USI or something like that it might yes work. well it's an idea let's look <laughs> into it but what it does highlight is how things are heating up in America mm -hmm. in particular with the American presidential and congressional elections that will be happening in November and we have also seen this week how the AFL-CIO are be going to re recruit and get on the floor and on the ground over 300,000 union organisers to support the re-endorsement of President Obama and while we, we won't stray into the politics, what's interesting is the actual the use of social media to harness campaigning to have it very tailored and very sophisticated like the Mitt Romney mm -hmm. element uh, on, on Pandora so it is fascinating and we'll be keeping a close eye in terms of the, the new things that develop in this presidential election uh, about the use of social media and organised Labour's role in that and for that reason we're going to be expanding and growing USI's team and we'll be having someone in North America who will be doing regular contributions for us in order to keep us fully up to date on what's happening on the ground which is a really exciting development for USI but also it's exciting in terms of how social media is developing and the sophistication of it and what we can learn and adapt to enhance the voice of organised labour. Thanks Andrew, anything else this week? Any more updates from USI? Yeah, I mean once again it's, it's, it's we're delighted to say that we're at the, the Bakers and Food and Allied Workers Executive in Manchester in the UK this week and we gave a presentation which was received very, very warmly, you know, a rousing endorsement for the objectives of USI and what we are trying to do and helping to give oxygen to the campaigns that are going around the world that our movement should be interested in and the potential of the technology that we have to connect workers in a more meaningful way on a regular basis. So that was absolutely fantastic for to be endorsed by the, the Bakers Union and to work with them in the future of exploring international work that they're already doing and how we can assist in that process. And for uh, people who are watching this clip on USI Live 2012, our YouTube channel, or perhaps the hundreds of you that are listening to our podcast, we'll be having our first advisory board meeting, which will, will be joined by a multitude of trade unions and NGOs about how we can consolidate and grow the work, which is really exciting for us to be able to sit down with our union supporters and people who are interested in our campaign including NGOs and charities about how we can work together 
uh, and on a common front to help each other act as a multiplier because there's some fantastic work that is getting done by charities, NGOs and other trade unions that we are only too happy to give voice to and to help endorse. So I'm really looking forward to that and the opportunity to continue the growing conversation with USI. Some of the most uh, successful things we've done in the past few weeks have been the web conferences that we've had, which many thousands of people have uh, taken part or have watched on YouTube and if they've not taken part in the conference itself. And we've got a number of really interesting conferences coming up in the next few weeks. We've got um, Tom Watson, MP, talking about News International, social media and the role of media in general. We've got uh, Nick Nicholas Shaxon talking about... Uh, his book Treasure Islands which looks at tax havens and the role tax havens have of uh, hiding the world's w wealth away from governments and also sure. from the, the public sector. Uh, we have Kamal Abbas of the Centre for Trade Union and Worker Services in Egypt who will be talking about the Egyptian labour movement really uh, after, after the uh, revolution post Mubarak and uh, we have anyone else Andrew? We have also got the agreement by Michael Hudson to participate mm -hmm. in our web conference which continues our fascinating uh, economics series which has included uh, Steve Keen, Stephanie Kelton, Yanis Varoufakis and Michael will be joining us to talk about the need for uh, debt jubilees and other issues regarding financialisation so it continues the excellent series we've had and if you haven't watched it in our YouTube clips yet you know just dip into it a little or even download it onto your phone by listening to the podcast and Sometimes the actual the quality of the sound can be a little bit better than that, and if you're on the bus, uh, on the tube, uh, you know, check out USI and hear what some of the most prominent academics around the world have got to say about tackling austerity. Thanks, Andrew, and uh, thank you once again for continuing to engage with USI and for listening to our podcast and watching our videos. We appreciate it. Together, let's build international solidarity.